Hello guys, welcome back to another video of Brogowski Outdoors. So, I just want to give a big shout out to all the people that watched my last video. Y'all loved it. I'm thinking I'm about to hit 300 um, views. Thank you so much. And um, just keep on supporting the channel. And thank y'all. But, let's talk about this video today. So, what this video is, I was going to do a night fishing tips and tricks video. I just wanted to break down everything I know about night fishing and how I can help y'all become better anglers out here. So what I was gonna do was, last night I went night fishing. Yes, this intro is um, recorded after. I went night fishing last night because I was gonna do a um, night fishing video for y'all um, in a few days, but that was a bust, so I can't do that. But don't worry, you got some good videos coming, so still stay tuned. But I hope y'all enjoy this video. If you don't like the tricks, I'm sorry, there will still be fishing content and challenges like that coming up in the next few days, like I told y'all. But if you like the tips, please hit that like button, make sure to subscribe, and turn the notification bell on. Thank y'all, and see ya. Let's get right into this video, baby. So, first off, I want to talk about why I go night fishing. So a lot of people would probably question me like, why don't you just go in the morning or late evening? Um, a lot of it is because there's a whole different class of fish that feed in the daytime and that feed in the nighttime. And sometimes, most of the time in the summertime coming up, the bigger fish will feed at night. And so that's what I'm trying to do. That's why I'm starting the series, fish, Fishing for Giants at nighttime. So, um, a few tips here. So, um, wherever y'all are at, whoever y'all live, if y'all are, if y'all have a clear water reservoir or lake, whatever you want to call it, it'd be better to go when you have a newer moon or closer to a newer moon. Like, um, because that means the less light, since the water's so clear, they don't need much light because that means the, the bait fish will be able to see those bass. So the less light they have, which is because that means they can ambush them because they can still see in that crystal clear water. So that means they can ambush them with a little light. Now, with people from more dirty water reservoirs, um, new moon will be great. And where I'm going for um, Hugo's public fishing area, we're kind of in the middle-ish, so it doesn't really matter too much with us. A lot of times it'll work a lot. And um, yeah, so let's talk about some of my favorite baits I like to use for night fishing. So, I have a few rods here on the deck right here, you see. I got four just with me right now. So, let's just get straight into it. That's like what I talk about. One of my favorite baits and one of the most iconic night fishing baits of all time is this little lure right here. As y'all can see, that is a buzz bait. I'll leave a few different of my favorite buzz baits in the description here, but um, buzz bait. I have this on 50 pound braid. That's not what I would usually throw it on. You can literally throw a buzz bait on, on literally anything. I have, I hear pros that throw it on like 17 pound fluorocarbon or 18 pound fluorocarbon. I hear them throw it on like same, same poundage on mono. A lot of people, if they like to throw a braid, they'll throw it on like 30 pound braid. But I just have my top water rod here with me. Um, so I don't feel like changing line because I use a lot of frogs for this and other type of top waters. But Yes, buzz bait. The reason why I throw a buzz bait at night is because um, at night time, obviously you're, in a, you're more in the dark time. So this blade right here, I'll, I'll um, skip to a clip right here of how this runs in the water. But when it runs right here, this blade, I don't know if y'all can see that, it twists. And when it twists, it hits this little thing right here. And when it twists, it puts off the vibration. And the faster you move, the more loud you're going to get. And so at night time, the loud, the more rattle or um, loudness you can make in the nighttime, that'll be good right there. So a buzz bait. And if y'all wondering what gear I have this on, I have it on a Daiwa CC80, a great cheap reel for y'all people who are wanting to get into bait casters. It is an amazing reel, um, really good working. And for the price, it's literally only like fifty dollars. For the price, it's amazing. Now this rod is way more high end, and I, I just want to go ahead and tell y'all, y'all do not have to like make a high-end y'all do not have to um have a high-end rod and reel here but that is my first bait that i would choose to throw and so let's get into the second bait right here so second bait obviously y'all are one of the most iconic 
probably things that have won the most tournaments out of all time is a good old Texas rig. Now, if y'all are wondering, why does he have a bobber stopper and a bead? So at night, like I was telling y'all, it's really good to make as much noise as you possibly can. And so, what I have here is a bobber stopper about probably a good, I don't know, four inches off? You can do as high as you want, it doesn't really matter, but you can't go too high because if you go too high, the bobber stopper will get all in your eyes of your rod and then it'll get into your reel and your reel will completely mess up. So don't get it too high. But the reason why I have this bead right here is because when I hop it off the bottom, that weight hits the bobber stopper right there and then the bead comes down and hits that um, weight right there. So it creates a lot of um, noise. And I'm just using a lead right, right here, but I, lead weight, ugh. But I would suggest to, for you all guys, if you're wanting to try this technique at night, I would suggest using a bronze weight because it um, can make even more suggestions. But yeah, also, um, so what I would put on this Texas rig, a lot of times at night, I would like to throw bigger worms because like I said, bigger fish usually come out. And I would be throwing the 10 inch Goon Baits Mondo worm. I'll leave that in the link in the description. I left it in the link in the description in my last video. So y'all can go check that out too. Great long worm. And for, um, I'll leave some of my favorite colors too. And we'll get into colors later in the video. Let's get into the next bait here. So, next bait here. This is a deep diver crankbait. I don't know if y'all see that. I think it's an 8XD, um, right here. And, um, yes, deep divers. So deep divers, um, the reason why I'm going to throw them is because there's going to be two types of class of fish. There's going to be some that are going to be shallower, and then there's going to be some that are deep. It just depends on the day, the time, what kind of lake you're at, um, all the moon. It just depends on a lot of things. But the way I pick how deep I want my crankbait to go is like how high the moon is and how much light they can see. Because the higher the moon is, the deeper I'm going to want it to get it. Because in that darker water, the deeper it gets, the darker and colder it gets. And so the deeper I'm going to get, the darker it's going to get. And that's where they can ambush bait on the bottom if they're going to be in the deeper water. Because they don't want to get higher because the bait will be able to see them better in that highlight condition. And so the reason, the reason why I picked this 8XD right here, as y'all can see that 8XD, is because I wanted to go a little bit deeper. When I'm fishing here, I usually fish from like... Sorry for that wind noise. Oh my goodness. This wind is ripping today. Thankfully, I'm going night fishing and not um, eh, daytime fishing. But so, usually, what type of. Um, what type of. How deep my water I fish is? I usually fish from all the way up to like two feet of water to a good maybe probably 15. And this probably will dive like a good um probably five to 15 feet however fast and however high you keep your rod tip and all that and what your line is and so yeah that's a good little tip there for why i throw deep divers and the color here is i have a red-eyed sexy shad good little color there translucent a lot of people say throw darker colors at night and yes i'm sure darker colors do work very well but like it doesn't have to be darker colors like just because it's at nighttime doesn't mean the color of a fish changes. Like, that's like trying to say, like, a bass goes black in the middle of the night. Or, like, a bluegill or a crawfish or shad go, like, darker at night. No, it doesn't. It does not go darker at night. It may seem darker in the water because of what y'all see, but bass have different eyes. So, yeah. That's pretty much it. And what I have line on here, I wanted to get um pretty deep down there. I have... Um, Y'all probably can't see that too much, but I have 12 pound Berkeley Vanish fluorocarbon. The fluorocarbon makes it be able to sink and it has a good amount of stretch, not too much like mono, but it's a good amount of stretch. And then I have it on the same Daiwa CC80 reel right here. And I have it on, this rod is not too bad either. I think it's like $78. I'll leave it in the link in the description. It is a Dobbins. I think it's like a Colt series cranking rod. It's like a medium heavy cranking rod. It's pretty much an all around cranking rod. Like, its action is moderate, so you can pretty much throw it up all the way down to a jerk bait, all the way up to like a 10XD deep diver crankbait. Great rod. I'll leave that in the description again. 
Now, let's get into the last category of baits I would throw is this little dandy right here. That is what you call a chatterbait. Now, let's talk about why I would throw a chatterbait. Also, you could throw a spinnerbait or a swim jig. I'll leave all those in the link in the description and my favorite types and my favorite colors, all that. But, so what I have is just a normal old Z-Man original chatterbait. So in my lake here, there is a good amount of bluegill and shad. Like it's not just an only shad um, type of lake and it's not just an only bluegill lake. Um, like some are. And if you have a mostly dominant shad, like pretty much all dominant, I would throw a spinnerbait because, and not just any old spinnerbait that you pick up, a double willow leaf. And um, I'll pan to what that looks like right now. In this. But a double willow leaf, the way like those blades and what they look like and when they look like and flash in the water, it just looks exactly like a shad to those fish. And it just works really well for more shad lakes. Now, chatterbait, it has more of a bigger thump and a kind of a wider profile per se of how it thumps, which makes it put off a more bluegillish thing. And so do swim jigs, but if you have a little more stained water and you want to go for bluegill, you can throw this. I don't think I'm going to throw this tonight, the white color, because um, I don't think I need it. My water's not too dirty, so I can literally just get away with a green pumpkin color, and um, I can try that. So I'm going to throw probably that. And um, also swim jigs, that's just, swim jigs can pretty much look like anything, like Yes, yeah, spinnerbaits do make it look a lot more like a shad or um, bait fish, gives you shad, whatever you want to call it. Um, it does help that look like a lot more like that. But swim jigs can pretty much look like anything. Whatever color you throw at them just helps that presentation here. So, yeah, those are my fav favorite four baits here that I like to throw. Now, let's get into color. I was talking about that earlier about my crankbaits and how I was saying a lot of people like to throw darker lures. Yes, those do work very much, darker lures. And for my worms, I'm just a darker lure kind of guy. I don't like throwing lighter worms like a green pumpkin worm or something unless it is very clear water. I like to throw more like June bug color, um, uh, black and blue. There's a lot of different colors. I know Guggen baits have a plum color. That's what I'm going to be throwing tonight. But the lighter the moon is shining on, the more lighter your baits can go. And the darker, the more darker you can go. Now, I'm not going to say you don't have to go dark. Because you can, you can go out there in a brand new new moon, whatever water clarity, and have this 8XD white, um, almost translucent, sexy shag color. And you can catch a fish. But in darker conditions, you're probably going to want to throw that. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much about color. And that's what all my tips and tricks that I have for y'all today. So thank you for tuning in for my tips and tricks. And I'll, if y'all like this type of thing, make sure to hit that like button. Peace.